Hi friends, thank you for joining me here today. My name is Jai and welcome to my channel. My goal is to empower you to shine your unique light into the world. With that said, let's get started. Yes, hi, thanks for joining me here guys. Yes, it is that time again and we have a really awesome um, title for you guys. So basically, it is what makes you a badass powerhouse, right? Your innate design, all right? So I will be correlating a little bit of the um, essence of what I do pick up from your spread uh, with the human design system. Um, it's not going to be like, just because I mention it doesn't mean that, you know, that is exa your exact human design. I just want to kind of introduce you into it so that you can go uh, and, you know, research it on your own. Um, so before we start, I just want to add a disclaimer here. Uh, for all viewers and subscribers that I am not a human design reader. I've only tapped into the tip of the iceberg on this system and has become so fascinated on it because, you know, through my own studies and my own body graph chart, I see so many attributes being highlighted and, you know, and especially how it stands true for me. So, you know, especially on how I lived my life in the past and how I live my life now. And that really intrigued me so uh, to see, you know, how I can actually best utilize this information um, on my personal energy and how I can thrive, right, in my own way in the future. So I do encourage you guys to do the same thing and we can, you know, basically walk together on this journey, right? So feel free to leave a comment on your personal experiences within this topic and um, on what, whatever it is that your findings are. I love learning new things, so I do implore you to share your stories, Okay. Um, now, with that said, human design is not meant to keep your, um, it's not meant to keep you limited, right? It's not meant to keep you in a box um, of that particular type that you may correlate to within your body graph. So it's not, you know, it's not here to label your, your design in any form or fashion. So what it is implying, though, it is implying and encouraging you to actually to understand your personal frequency a little bit more, okay? So this system was created by... Uh, a gentleman named Ra Aruhu, that's his nickname, um, also known as Alan Robert Krakauer, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, I do apologize if, if I'm butchering his name, but that's who he is. And the system is to actually to ignite curiosity so that you can actually follow, right, the breadcrumbs left by your soul, okay? So a bit about um, what human design is, it actually consists of five different types of auric resonance. Now, some people say it could be four because basically... Um, you know, they're different, they're like a one sub level for the generators, but I say it's five. Um, and they have nine centers, 36 channels and 64 gates. Um, I won't be going into what they are, but just know that there are five types, which is the manifestors, the generators, the manifesting generators, projectors and reflectors. Okay. So keep in mind, no matter which type you are, uh, or no matter which type I actually reference in your pile, it doesn't mean that that's your fixed type, right? I'm only picking up the essence of what your energy is exuding. So, um, but to be honest, I am referencing the system because I truly want to spark your curiosity, okay? I really want you to really take the initiative to dive deeper into it. Um, if you want to get to know your body graph a little bit more, I will link down uh, the description down below on where you can input uh, free for free, you know, into the uh, ca body graph calculator and you can go from there. So with that, uh, we do have four piles here, a very four very potent piles, right? <laughs> because this pick a card again is all about what makes you a badass powerhouse, right? So I'm really excited about this. I can't wait to see what pops up for you guys. Um, but you will see the next scene will be the top down view and then you can go ahead and do your thing, you know, get into alignment and pick your pile and I'll see you at your pile. Hi friends, thanks for joining me here at the top down view of all the different piles we have here for you guys today. So yes, yeah, so the main topic is what makes you a badass powerhouse, okay? Your innate design, all right? So I will be kind of correlating or giving you a little bit of, um, just a little bit of information on human design later on within your piles, but um, it doesn't necessarily mean that just because I picked up on those references doesn't mean that you are that exact type. It just kind of gives me the idea of what that essence is within your spread. Now we have pile number one, pile number two, pile three, and pile four, okay? Um, I will leave the description uh, the uh, timestamps down below in the description box so you can go ahead and close your eyes or do whatever it is that you need to do to get into alignment 
and then I will meet you at your pile. Hi guys, so if you picked out this timestamp, it is for group number one. Yes, hi, group one, thanks for joining me here. So you have picked out group number one. I actually deliberately kept it really plain and simple because sometimes less is more, right? So I have been kind of um, being, well actually I was guided to actually put just the sticky note here. So you picked up pile number one, and the main topic is what makes you a badass powerhouse, right? Your innate design, right? So I'm going to correlate that a little bit with the human design chart and system that I, uh, you know, came across, but it's not going to be, you know, remember whatever I say or whatever I see here in your pile does not mean that you are that exact type, okay? It's just me picking up on the different essences that are coming and exuding from that particular type um, for the hum human design. So, but I do recommend if you didn't watch the intro, um, you can go in the description down below. You can input for free your information, uh, birth date. I think it takes like your birth date and things like that and time. And then it'll calculate for you for free to see where, which, you know, type you are. So with that, let's get started. So pile number one, you have got, yes. Wow. Okay. So earth pulsing pulse of the mother, slow down time in nature. Yay. I really love this card. I actually just got this deck um, a couple of days ago, but I didn't post it or anything because I wanted to kind of give it a little surprise, a surprise element today. So, and then you've got, wow, number 22. Okay, so any number that you do see per usual, I always recommend for you to go ahead and go online and check your angel numbers because there's always a reason why you're seeing these numbers, okay? So um, it says here, library, take control of your own narrative. Ooh, Wow, that is very intense. Okay, so the next one is life energy. I'll read that later on So, because we do have a lot of cards and we have to go through them. So number 14, soul mate. Okay, wow. Okay. All right, so number four, movie. Then you've got magnetism. Wow, I really love the illustration for this deck. I really do. That's why I love to kind of like keep this deck incorporated in each you know, a lot of my readings. Um, one of scrolls on track. Okay, pretty interesting. Okay, I will read the affirmations later on because um, that's just something that I normally wait till the end. So now you've got the In Between Tarot by Janine Worthington, right? So the In Between Tarot deck here says, you are going in between the Ten of Coins to the Ace of Coins. So the energy is the Ten of Coins, okay? So let's put that here. And if you do want to purchase that deck, you can go to Janine's, um, you know, channel or, and Instagram as well. It's, it's, I'll link that down below as well. Okay. So, and then the last but not least, Beauty and the Beast, you need some space in a relationship. Oh, oh, look at that. I love her eyes. So her eyes are so beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to actually, per usual for my reading, I will take a couple of minutes to, you know, make sure that I can see all the different scenarios here, um, but it'll be a couple seconds for you guys, so I'll see you in a couple seconds. All right, group number one. Okay, so I am very drawn to this new deck here, right, that I just got um, from Rebecca Campbell, right? She, it's by her. So she has a lot of decks, but this one happens to be the starseed one. And it says here, earth pulsing, pulse of the mother, slow down time in nature. Okay. So group number one, what makes you a badass powerhouse? Okay. What is your innate design? What fuels your fire? I mean, when I see this card, I think of the questions like, what are you made of, right? Because there's so many different elements here, different things that you see in this card, right? So immediately I see this earth pulsing card here, um, which talks about you having a very special connection to mother earth, okay? Um, the pulsing of this uh, card, the pulsing of the energy that I sense from this card is basically letting me know that this is, this is a very luscious pulsing, right? This is a very luscious planet. So then I realize how, you know, this actually correlates to you as a person. So what makes you such a badass powerhouse group number one is the amount of energy you hold inside of you, okay? You are what I would consider the infinite energizer bunny, okay? A being that actually has, 
oh my gosh, an obscene amount of life energy and resources because, you know, what is this planet all about? What does it contain, right? Mother Earth has like literally all sorts of different living creatures, um, a living or non-living. They're all, but, you know, I do believe that rocks and stones have, you know, essence in them and, you know, they may not be like sentient beings, but they, they do have a consciousness in my opinion from what I've researched. So I really honestly think that, um, you know, you inside of you, you have a lot of resources. Okay. You have a lot of, of abundance, a lot of life force energy. So this reading, um, like I said, is not a human design reading. I am not a human design reader, but I did learn some things about the each different types. And for me, um, your essence really exudes the power of um, a generator, right? It really reminds me of a generator. So what a, so basically now you don't have to be a generator, uh, just a reminder, this is not about that. It's not about you. This is not about assessing your, your type, but to understand yourself better, okay? This is the thing that um, a generator is basically someone who actually holds a lot of life force energy, who actually glows and emanates a lot of um, pulsating, pulling kind of energy as well. So you may find that you attract a lot of different walks of life, a lot of different people a lot of different beings like animals and and creatures and things like that right because you are you you operate off of the sacral um chakra so the sacral chakra is basically all of creation all of cre creating energy so that's why things are drawn to you okay um if you would like to know more about that i do recommend you check out your body graph uh i will link it down below there's a free body graph calculator online there so go check that out if you haven't already um but anyway so back to this the your reading okay group number one so uh to what i am seeing here for you guys group number one so with this really enormous amount of resources and energy residing within you you will radiate such an auric pulse okay um much like how mother earth right like this card says mother earth's pulsating right so it much like how mother earth pulsates the vibration is extremely attractive to a lot of people a lot of things okay not just people but animals alike okay and you are very enticing to a lot of different existing energies okay so from like i said it's 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 like you're basically calling all things to you because the thing is, the authority and the, I don't know, like the exact um, name of each category, but for generators, you are to respond to uh, the simulations that are being brought in front of your face. So uh, for you, it's not about initiating. It's not about going out there and making things happen right away, but it's more of like, okay, you, you influence, you ask questions within the universe. And then what happens is the universe will actually bring forth, right, in front of you, um, things that will stimulate you and that will actually give you the opportunity to respond. Okay. And that's the best part of being a generator. Cause I'm, I'm also a generator. So I can totally relate to this essence. And that's why I picked on, I picked up on it right away. I was like, wow, this is probably my pile. <laughs> so yeah. So, um, I'm a generator two, four, like I said before in the intro, if you didn't listen to the intro, there's a lot of different factors that make up um, what we are and who we are, right? Um, again, again, you know, human design is not there to dictate or say that this is all you are. It's just saying, look deeper into what these energies mean for you, okay? What is your secret superpower? So anyway, so enough about that. So basically, what I'm seeing, your pulsating aura like i said it will lure it it's, it's almost like you sing a song energetically that will actually lure others to you in ways that you can't imagine okay and it will bring just about anybody towards you um towards your auric vicinity okay that means that it includes light and dark so be mindful about that okay generators we're talking about you being that beautiful pure gold in a gold mine and people will want you a piece of you right <laughs> So it's like, huh, okay. And, you know, it's funny because uh, generators are like, I think it makes up for like 70% of population. So there's a lot of us out there, um, you know, or you may be like a hybrid, you know, there's a lot of different, there's also a sub level called the generating manifest, manifesting generators. So if you are, then, you know, hopefully it comes out. If not, then you can always go online to see uh, which, you know, what, what that's all about. Okay. So Enough with this. When I'm looking on here, I really do see the correlation in colors. You see how the different colors kind of match up here? 
Um, so we were talking about a gem. That's why I got the notion that this pile, oops, this pile, right, is the generating pile. So the generator's uh, life energy. The happy fairy of sunshine brings lots of life-giving energy, okay? She reminds you to shine your light and to reveal anything in the shadows that needs to be healed, okay? So this also kind of indicates that maybe you're going through some kind of healing process right now, or you may not even realize that you have something to heal. So look into that. I do recommend you meditating to get to know yourself. Um, but with this, it's basically to validate this notion in this life energy card, okay? So I sense that you may not like to be so exposed or vibrant, right? It's like you don't really care for being in the spotlight, and that's what I picked up. But, you know, the thing is about generators is that the spotlight always seems to find you, okay? This is because you pretty much radiate. You pulsate, okay? Just like this card in, uh, implicate. It really talks about you pulsating, you radiating, right? You're, you're shiny. It's what you are. <laughs> so, you know, it's, um, it's you naturally, Ill what is that word? Illuminating? Yeah, the illuminating the dark, right? Wherever you go, you illuminate the space. So, uh, because of this life energy card, it's all about that, and it's about, um, you know, walking and shining upon the shadows, right? So whatever is lurking in the dark and around the corner, it has no choice but to appear, right? So basically, you know, yeah, okay, so let me explain what that means for you, okay? So what I see, what that means is the Beauty and the Beast card here really talks about, remember I told you that as a generator, you will attract all walks of life and you will attract those that are maybe working with their lower energies, right? Um, but it says here, Beauty and the Beast, you need some space in a relationship. Now this is number eight. So eight can also correlate to not just infinite prosperity, but it can also correlate to karmic cycles, karmic relationships, okay? Um, you can look that up online as well. It's, it has to do with numerology. Now, with this Beauty and the Beast card, if I can remember correctly, the story of the Beauty and the Beast is about the girl named Belle, right? And and uh, she's widely known in her own town for being one of the most attractive, the most studious, the most loving, because she's very loyal and she's very, um, she's such a filial child. Like she loves her dad so much, right? Um, she's very strong-willed and she's very smart, okay? And so she's known to be a family-oriented person and a very loyal person, okay? Um, and then you have the opposite side of this picture here, which is this scary-looking creature, right? So basically, he actually is the beast who used to be a human, but because he wasn't a very good person in the past, and he actually literally messed with the wrong witch, so... <laughs> He got a spell casted upon him and he physically turned into a beast. That's basically the the whole shenanigan here, right? This is the whole thing that happened. Um, so he was like left to his own demise in the castle. Um, and the, so anyways, so long story short, the only way to break the spell is if he's able to actually find true love. Um, so Belle became that true love for him in the end. So what I'm trying to say is that group number one, you are much like Belle where for other people, you would be considered the it person, okay? You can actually fulfill other people's desires or other people's needs, um, you know, and things like that. So then you would be, to them, is almost like a rare gem to other people. And that's the kind of light that people envy. The, but in a way, it's like, all they need to do is just see their own light, right? So, but again, so back to the story. So those that are, uh, like I said, of low vibrational frequency, who is basically still holding, holding on to their shadows, will want to take control over you, okay? So how this relates to the story here uh, and to your energy is that your light acts as a catalyst in provoking the shadows within others to surface um, you know, in order to be healed or to be transmuted, right? And it's 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 like, like I said, that pulling, that pulsating energy that really pulls them to you. And it really stands true, uh, especially to this particular card, right? Because Beast is like really, really in love with her. And um, at first sight, it wasn't, for him, it was love at first sight in a sense. But for her, it wasn't because, you know, as humans, we, we tend to look, a, a little on more of the shallow side where we don't really see a person for who they are at first glance, right? Um, not always. So yeah, but we were talking about that pulsation, right? That, that pulling. So I noticed that you have the magnetism card here. And so what that does 
this is all about you holding that magnificent light, right? That emanating such a glow that um, it basically casts your light throughout the whole space, right? The whole canvas, even to the deepest, darkest corner, okay? Like I said, they, the, the dark cannot hide from you. That's why they have no choice but to run towards you. So you see, um, this is how the shadowy part um, if you look at the picture here, see how the shadowy part is right here and this light is uh, shining through in the middle, right? So basically this whole being, when this is being casted in the shadows, this being is being shown here, right? So that's what I'm talking about. They have no choice but to go towards you because the light is kind of pushing them towards you, right? Now, you as a generator is to respond to that energy. You can ask yourself before you take initiative you can take heed and actually go within your gut right because the thing about the language for um the authority for um for generators is that you basically resonate with sound and you resonate with the grunting and the and the growling inside of you like say for example you go up to something and you look at a picture and you're like oh, mm -mm. or you go up to a person and you're like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so and i noticed the other day when i as i was reading the book and i i forgot all about what i was learning and then um, the book I'll show you later on. So then I literally caught myself midair, like noticing that I was doing the, the mm-mm, mm-hmm. So I do, it, it is true. Like that's why I kind of laugh in the beginning because I was just like, wow, this really is one of the most or closest to accurate assessment tool that you can find out there. I mean, we don't know what's going to come in the future, but for right now, the human design is basically like the it factor for me. So anyway, so back to the magnetism, right? Um, but yeah, so I have this feeling that you may have in the past attracted a lot of toxic people in the past. And um, those people or person may have actually wanted to take control of you in ways that, you know, basically hindered your growth, right? And it dimmed your light um, in such a really bad way that, you know, during that time period of your life, you felt like, oh, I don't know, you just felt like you, you're lost, right? Or you feel like, oh, I'm stuck. I can't do anything that you don't have any power, right? So that's because you were not aware of how special you are, how special you were back then as well. I literally looked down and I noticed because we were talking about be having control, right? Someone taking control. So um, the library card here, actually, let me pick that up now. Ah. Okay. All right, guys. It's such a beautiful, gorgeous card. So number 22, you can also look that up. Um, library, take control of your own narrative, okay? So to me, this card not only speaks about you coming to a point of awareness, it's also about you holding so much wisdom, right? Because this, what is the library, right? It has a lot of books, a lot of knowledge, a lot of access, a lot of resources, right? So this tells me that you have a lot of wisdom within you and you holding so much information and witty thoughts, right? I just got that just now. Like you guys are very, very witty, very clever. It's like you are super intelligent, but don't realize it, okay? And it's basically you've yet to fathom the truth of what your own ability and your, your you know, you don't really know what you hold, how special you are, okay? Um, you know, just because the type is, now the types, the different types are actually correlating and assessing your aura. It doesn't mean that that's, you know, you're not special in your own way because every single person is special in their own way. And like I said in the beginning of the intro, if you didn't see it, um, there's a lot of different factors that kind of makes up and encompasses the human design, okay? So just uh, once you find out your type, then you can go from there. Um, but uh, back to here. So a lot of times I also sense that you could have literally put people um, in their places in the past for, um, you know, just a mere comment and come back, right? But the, with that said, though, it got you in trouble because a part of you is like, oh, I don't really, I mean, naturally you are witty, but when, once those witty comments come out, you kind of like retract back to like you being submissive or or feeling like, oh, you're not good enough to, to withstand uh, the comebacks that are going to come back at you, right? <laughs> this is this is literally me in the past. So, but it's like, um, it's so funny. So, but it's like, you don't really, um, 
So, but it's like, you, it's not that you do it because you don't have much empathy or compassion when you do spew out those really mean things sometimes. It's that, you know, it's, it's definitely warranted, right? But for some people, it could, now this could only be, you know, it doesn't have to correlate or take what you resonate with, okay, guys? But for some of you guys, it's really about in the past, you were, you may be operating from that shadow self, right? Which really matches this bell character in, um, and that card there so so yeah so basically this beauty and the beast right for me she sees the light within all beings okay she was able to see the higher version of the beast right the higher version of his self right the sweet and vulnerable side to him so group number one you guys have very spiritual eyes in my opinion um i can see that you actually see the very best in people and you bring both light and dark out of others as well but you choose to have faith that others will actually choose the light right eventually at least right <laughs> we're all hoping but you know the thing is um there can be some very extremely hard lessons for you to be had in this factor though because sometimes it takes much longer for those that actually operates from their shadow side to truly either realize or um embark on changing for the better okay so for some it's about not having the confidence and trust that they can achieve it. Um, and that's why they operate from the shadow side. But so what I mean is you can't help everybody. Group number one is what I'm trying to get at as well with your radiant big heart. And I can totally relate with this, right? There will come a point when you actually need to allow others to fall down so that they can actually learn to empower themselves, right? Just like you fell down and you learned to empower yourself, right? So through the falling and, and them picking themselves up, I know it's hard for you guys. Um, trust me, I totally get it. It's hard to see the ones you love falling head first and all you can do is sit and allow them to do exactly that and it really hurts you and you feel like running to them and just saying, okay, okay, I'll help you, right? But a part of you really need to know that, you know, this is necessary, but now what I'm, you know, I'm not saying never to help other people, okay? This is not that at all. What I'm seeing is that you will have to go within yourself, you know, and ask yourself by helping them, will this allow them to grow as a person? I mean, if the answer is yes, then by all means, you know, help. But if it's a no, then you will have to realize that if by helping them means it's only going to enable their bad behavior, then, you know, best believe it's it's better to actually let them learn on their own. Okay, group number one. And, you know, for some of you guys, your powerhouse is here, right? And, you know, for you guys, I do sense that you have learned this lesson for yourself. And that's what makes you such a badass powerhouse, right? This is why, you know, your innate design, the way that you are, okay? You guys are badasses. You guys have gotten to a point of like, don't mess with me, you know, that that kind of stage in life. Don't mess with me because I know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> so, you know, now, you know, it's like, you know what's best for you and you know your own true value, okay? Because of this elevated, self-empowered, um, you know, sparkling people are actually now going to actually be attracted to you because you know what you deserve. Okay. You, you're, you're going to actually attract your soulmates, the right kinds of soulmates, you know, that includes friends, family, um, and lovers, you know, um, because here you actually have the soulmate card. So let's actually grab that right now. Yeah. Wow. So beautiful. I love this deck. It's so pretty. Okay. So Basically, what I'm saying is that the friends and family and lovers that will cherish you, they know your true value because you know your own true value, okay? You guys are priceless, okay? Group number one, just like this Mother Gaia card over here, there's, there's no price tag on you guys. You guys are not a thing to be controlled or to be put down. You are the energy of abundance and self-love, okay? Just, just a really beautiful reminder, okay? And you are a sign of wealth and best believe you are a badass powerhouse, okay? You know how to work your magic. So trust your magic. Trust in you, okay? Um, because why I say this too is because I'm telling you, you guys really are badasses. Because look at, we were talking about the soulmates. And number 14, don't forget to look that up. But right here, as you can see, equality now, right? This is why I, I'm really, really guided to really talk about this, the 
suppression of your characteristics, like other people trying to, to push you down so that you don't really know who you are, right? Ten of coins, ten of coins, the ace of coins. I love this beautiful deck so much because there's just so many, so much depth, right? So with the ten of coins, it's talking about abundance and legacy, okay? It's about you having infinite amount of resources, um, just like that card. It really correlates to that pulsating earth card over there. And yeah, so basically it's about you building things for yourself too because nobody else is going to do that for you, right? And you're starting to realize what you hold within you, okay? You are the person to put yourself on track because you've got that track card over there too. See, you've got this track card. It says one of scrolls on track. So basically with these two together, it is really telling me that you are on the move right now um, as you are in your life watching this video now, it's talking about you are on the right track to going into equality, getting what you deserve, okay? Getting the justice that you deserve, all right? And not only that, you're becoming a very abundant and pentacles, right? The ten of coins is the pentacles. So you're talking about if you are having like financial problems or financial lack or something like that, all of those things are going to change. But where does it start, right? This is why I really want to introduce human design to you guys because if you don't already know or have heard of it, I really encourage you and implore you to do, really dive deeper um, because it really can help you find your superpower, right? Because this is about the badass you, right? The badass powerhouse that you are. So this is about you finding out, okay, where do I shine? And how can I utilize that to thrive, right? And how do I get paid for that? <laughs> That's the key, right? Because as much as we don't really want to admit finances and money and things like that, it makes the world go round, right? It, it kind of gives you resources that you wouldn't have otherwise. So yeah, so back to these cards here. Um, so yeah, it's basically you seeing the course and you seeking equality for yourself and those around you who needs it because it says here equality now, right? And you see how these two people, right? It's about you gaining that just deserve. Doing it really cool. <laughs> um, there were some other cards that I wanted to talk. Oh yeah, okay, so the movie card, right? So basically look at look at how this really reminds me of uh, and it's so funny how that Beauty and the Beast card came out with this card too in your deck in your spread. So group number 1 your life is like a movie. That's what I'm picking up and look you're laughing you're you're smiling now because you know maybe you had just really reached the the point of like wow I'm finally seeing my my rewards, right? To say the least is what I mean. And I can say that so many people would actually you know, they would learn so much from you, right? From your past struggles. You have so much wisdom inside of you, group number one. Um, So much wisdom and human connection, okay? Through your own experiences that you can actually write a book or make a movie out of your life story. That's what I'm sensing because this card came out. Um, Yeah, people will definitely pay to watch your story for sure. You can actually give people the answers and solutions and help them find resolution and things like that, okay? Um, if you don't already have a YouTube channel and you know that your life is full of drama and life lessons and gems to be had, like I recommend for you to actually start that. I actually have a story time channel that I will be executing this year, but we'll see how that goes. I really do have things to, I'd like to share because a lot of times when I'm doing these pick a card videos, I'm always saying, yeah, I can totally relate. I can totally relate, but I never really dive deeper because we're so limited on time here. But you know, once I do execute that story time channel for you guys, I'll let you guys know. And then you'll see, I wasn't kidding. And I wasn't, you know, just talking out of my ass. I really did go through a lot too. So I, I empathize with you guys. Um, so yeah, so basically with this, right, this affirmation, it says, I witness the darkness and call on the light with my prayer. Thank you, universe, for guiding me to perceive this fear through the eyes of the teacher of love. So basically, yeah, it's basically talking about how you, like I said, you know, darkness comes to you, but you are the light. So you keep shining, okay? Wow. Okay. Yeah. So basically, wow. Group number one, you are a badass powerhouse for sure. I really hope you take the time to actually get to know your own human design. I mean, we all have our very own unique light and frequency. Okay. And getting to know that light that you hold within you is one of the probably the most important key factor to actually allowing you to own your own superpower and to allow your superpower to emerge, okay, group number one? You're on the right track because you did get that right track card. Um, but with that said, though, please don't forget to 
give it a big thumbs up um, if you like this reading. I will not be doing any extra things in terms of charms pulling and note pulling because I really want, this is a lot to digest. So I really would love for you to go into the description box um, as soon as you can and just, you know, go online uh, with on mybodygraph.com and put in your information to see where, which, where, you know, which type you are so you can learn more about yourself, okay? The key is to learning more about you in order for your superpower to actually emerge properly. So with that said, come join our amazing and creative family here where I do interesting and empowering pick a cards for you guys so that you can actually shine your deliciously unique light into the world. It's totally free and it will help my channel to grow in order to help as many people as possible, guys. That's my main goal. Okay. That's my number one goal. Um, feel free to like, share, and comment down below. I love interacting with you guys so much. That really is me talking. Now, I know that as the channel grows, right, and it grows bigger, I, I know that it's going to be a lot to, you know, give each person my time and attention. But for right now, as as it is where it is growing nicely um, and steadily I am able to respond accordingly so you know that really is me talking to you guys um, but with that said take care and I will see you guys in my next one Hi friends have you picked out this timestamp it is for group number two yes hi group number two. Oh my gosh I'm so excited because what makes you a badass powerhouse right a badass powerhouse what is your innate design let's get started so basically i really i was guided to actually keep it really really light in terms of like what to place on top and i was like you know what at th this time around it is less is more so basically i just gave a number on a post-it card here but you guys were drawn to this energy here okay so again i will be correlating it to what i've learned um in terms of human design and things like that now just a disclaimer if you didn't watch my intro this is not to assess or to categorize you or to kind of see what you are um because you know you may not you may be emanating or kind of illuminating the essence of the design that I will see through this spread as I open it, but that doesn't mean that you are exactly that. So I do recommend you look in the description box to actually put your stuff in, uh, your info in, it's, it's free, and you can check out and dive a little bit deeper, okay? So with that said, let's see what we've got here. So the, the main topic is what makes you a badass powerhouse, right? Your innate design. Group number two, this is your pile. I'm so excited. Wow. Okay. So water your garden, nourishment, body care, tenderness, and rest. Wow. I really love this card. Look at how beautiful this is. Actually, it's so funny because just a little tidbit here. So when I usually dream and I do talk to my guides and when I'm in the state of like just waking up or falling into sleep soon, um, this is the image very similar to what I see and when I talk to them. So that's pretty interesting. So you've got number 24, like I said, per usual. Go look up online to see what that angel number means for you. Uh, patient, rem uh, patient, potion, remember to practice self-love. I was gonna say patience, right? So maybe you guys are requiring some patience here too. <laughs> so let me put that here. Oh, okay. So number five, sadness. Oh, and do you see how like there's a paint um, tray here? Oh, what? Uh, palette board I forgot what that's called but uh, and a brush so maybe you guys are artists um let me see here hmm interesting okay so you also have group number two, group number two you have productivity okay <laughs> it's like whoa tongue tied over there so wow look at the vibrant colors so this one says the Akashic Library number two and uh, for Janine Worthington's In Between Tarot deck, if you, um, I will link down below where you can get this deck as well. Uh, this is the Six of Wands to the Seven of Wands, and the energy is in between. So it's in between, um, you know, not quite, it, like you've already reached the Six of Wands and not quite moving to seven, seven of Wands. So we'll put this here and we'll elaborate on that. And then you've got the Purity card from the Fairies, okay? So we're going to put that over here. And I will read your affirmation card later on because I usually do that at the end of your reading. And then nature, number 18. So look that up as well. And then least but not, uh, last but not least, a beautiful little worm, okay? <laughs> Take care of yourself, number 17. Okay, wow, 17 to 18, progression, right? You're Maybe you're, you're getting better at taking care of yourself, okay? But 
you know, <laughs> I'm going to actually take a couple of, this is like, the, I love this card. It's the first time I saw this card. Um, so basically, per usual, my reading, I will take a couple minutes to actually see all the different scenarios that may come through and also see you know, what kind of energy it exudes so that I can kind of correlate it to what I think may be your design type. Um, again, you know, don't hold me to it because it's not, you know, it's not here to assess you or anything like that. I'm not a reader um, in terms of human design. I'm not a human design reader. So, but anyways, I'll see you in a couple of seconds. All right, group number two. Okay, so immediately I am actually not drawn to the water your garden because group number one, I started with that deck first, but what I am drawn to is a beautiful little worm. I love the color scheme. The light pastel colors is very airy, very angelic feeling. So maybe you guys are connected to, um, actually you're, what I'm gathering is you are connected to uh, wind, but you're also, uh, not wind, air, and also connected to earth as well. Okay, but anyway, so with the beautiful little worm, okay, group number two, what makes you a badass powerhouse, right? What is your innate design? What's the stuff that makes you shine, okay? What makes you a cool badass, okay? So hear me out, group number two. <laughs> it's like I edify you and then kind of pull and retract you back because, you know, uh, like I said, the beautiful little worm, right? So basically... For a lot of people, it may it may have a lot of people feeling a little deterred, right, or maybe disgusted from this card here, um, because when you what do you feel? You know, not a lot of maybe a lot of people, or maybe not some, but for a lot of people that I have seen, we do kind of get a little bit uh kind of like deterred seeing a worm on the ground, right? You're like ah, let me skip over this thing. You know, it's kind of gross, ew. But you know, the thing about worms is that they're so fascinating. Okay, worms really do a play do play a very great role in providing um the life force energy okay so for those who are aware of how powerful these creatures are hands down it's amazing all right so i used to actually work on a farm when i was 16 years old and this is like you know decades ago okay so from what i can gather and remember is that i learned quite a bit about worms and these creatures are so fascinating in the way that they operate and in the way that they exist okay and especially on what they produce and contribute to nature as a whole so you know a little bit about worms is that they actually help to uh you know they actually create the nutrients right that makes up a large percentage of what exists in our soil on this planet okay so how they do this is by actually digesting all of the decayed debris on um the ground like leaves dead leaves dead food that gets left on the ground um dead carcasses things like that right because you as you can see when you see a you know, a road uh, kill, right? Like when you drive over an animal by accident or whatever, and there's a road kill on the ground, you'll you'll notice um, it'll start kind of, you know, <laughs> mitosis and all of those things happen and, it, and you, the worms come out, right? Or like maggots, things like that. So those are very similar species, okay? But we're talking about the little worm here, the earthworms, right? So basically what it does is that they process and breaks down the food by their, um, you know, within their digestive enzymes with the, that lies within their gut, okay? And they pass it through uh, their bloodstream, which actually gives them energy. And, and then the rest of the stuff passes out from their <laughs> anuses, okay? <laughs> their buttholes. And so those castings, AKA worm poo, right? Worm poop gets added to the soil to actually enrich the land, okay? So what does this mean for you, right? You guys are probably like, oh my gosh, so I'm a worm? No, it's not about that. Hear me out here, okay? It's so funny because the humor side of me wants to actually go with that joke that I was about to say, but then, uh, I don't know, I, I just wanna tease you guys, but then I'm like, ah, maybe not. Let's just kind of be on the serious side, right? So this is about you not realizing how much you are needed in the world, okay, group number two? Do you realize what you produce and create naturally actually keeps the planet alive? Like, that's how powerful you guys are, okay? You're naturally gifted, naturally have this inner light um, that really enriches the planet, okay? So, uh, fun fact about worms is that they can actually, cannot be in the direct sunlight, okay? Because they will actually dry out. So, they must always have to kind of keep hydrated and cool. So, that's why you always kind of see them in the ground. But they only come out when the rain when it rains because that's how they get their, their uh, moisture, right? Because um, 
that's that's basically how they keep hydrated. So this tells me about you guys, group number two. You guys may notice that you have um, or may like cooler climates, right? Because you get hot really easily and, you know, the water reserve within your body gets depleted really easily too, right? So there, um, with that, you actually must have to uh, really keep your body moist and hydrated. So drink a lot of water, okay, group number two. So with that said, you may also be a person that really do need to drink a lot of water uh, in order to feel really good, right? Um, so drink lots of liquids. Water is the best for you, right? You can have coconut, you know, you can get the electrolytes from coconut juice as well. If you don't like coconut juice, you can, you know, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, you can also <laughs> that burp again. That's so funny. Um, so yeah, so you can also basically drink things that are very nutrient um, you know, written, like they're very potent for you guys. So as you can see here, you know, you actually have the water your garden card, right? It's so fitting for you guys. So I really feel like this is your spirit animal in a sense, like you guys really need to tap into that a little bit more and really ground yourself, right? Because worms are basically, um, you know, operating on the ground. So water your garden, nourishment, body care, tenderness, and rest. So this also is a huge, Oh, huge indication for you guys, group number two, that you guys really do need to take the time to rest, right? So what does that mean? What does that mean for you guys, right? So group number two, it's a reminder, okay, for you guys to keep your body, your mind, and your soul very nourished, okay? Especially nourished with water because water acts as a conductor for your energy and it really re-energizes you and gives you the power to actually keep um, producing and moving things along, okay? It also tells me that with you, it actually starts with your mind because the water, um, you know, helps you kind of keep hydrated so you can actually think clearly, okay? Because we always correlate the garden space, especially within our thoughts space as well. So that's why I have the notion of your mind needing to be tended, right? Tend to your garden, meaning pull out those weeds, okay? Don't don't let them grow. Nourish your garden, right? Water your garden. The grass is not greener on the other side. It's where you pour your, where you uh, water the grass, right? Where you stand. So this can also talk about letting go of bad habits, okay, guys? Or maybe like a negative thought pattern, things like that. And, you know, as you can see, the thing about group number two, I really sense that you guys, um, your powerhouse ability starts with your self-image, your self-confidence, okay? Your ability to, to recognize yourself as an a very important person in the world, okay? That's the whole purpose of this reading here. And that is why I will correlate it to the human design factor that I have noticed here in this spread for you guys. Just keep in mind that what you do is super vital in how the world goes round, okay? This really reminds me of the type in human design known as the projectors. I know a couple of projectors in my own life and now that doesn't really truly um, mean that, you know, this is the group for projectors, but I do sense that there's a projector energy here. Okay. So, um, like I said, the projectors in my life that I do know don't really realize how truly amazing and gifted they are, right? They always kind of need that little reminder, which is fine. You no, know, everybody needs the confirmation and validation, right? Um, but the thing is, they are so creative and so gifted, okay? So this tells me that you may also have this inability to see at this moment, to see how amazing you are, how spectacular and badass you are, okay? Um, you don't realize the beauty that you hold either. And that really kind of like, I want to shake you awake and be like, hey, listen, you are so amazing. Like, I, that's what I feel like doing. So this also tells me that you may have had people in the past or maybe, you know, still around you right now telling you that you can't amount to anything. And I am so sorry for the trigger. You know, I, I already started it, so I can't even count backwards. So, you know, that is for you to realize now that through the study of human design, you can actually tap more into yourself and know that there's nothing wrong with how you operate. There's nothing wrong with how you are designed, okay? Um, you know, those people, they may have hinted that they don't think that you have what it takes to make it, right? They may also be the ones to actually push you to initiate things, to become manifestors, or be someone that actually goes against your grain, right? But you guys are not manifestors. You guys are projectors, okay? A little bit about projectors um, is basically projectors are works best when they are actually 
um, waiting for the invitation, right? Knowing what the, the, they have to kind of tap into their opportunistic side of them to have more patience as well, because you guys want to get things done, right? But initiating doesn't always pan out for you guys. Um, you know, take what you resonate with. Again, go online to check out what your body graph is. Um, but the thing is, those people, they want to categorize you as part of a cookie cutter role, but that's not you. You're made different, okay? Everybody is made differently. But the thing is, projectors are like, I think you guys only make up like 30% of the world. No, not even 30%, um, less than that, because 70% are generators. So you guys are really like close to being rare okay <laughs> um yeah so basically back to here so to excel you know you love to be in order to like really really excel in what you do i noticed that projectors from what i learned is that you love to be respected to be recognized genuinely on the things that you're actually good at so according to the human design studies projectors do well when they don't force themselves to take initiative but to actually wait for an invitation instead okay um but that doesn't mean that waiting for an invitation doesn't mean that you can't influence the the that invitation right or or, or try to give a little bit you know, of clue, hey, I'm waiting for an invitation. You can so do that. That's totally fine, okay? But the thing is, it's about seeing the right opportunities, seeing the right cue and clues so that you can actually go ahead and immerse in that very same project that you were about to take initiative on. Um, you know, the thing is, when someone genuinely invites you and, and for you to partake in it, you tend to excel really well. So now I'm not saying that you're the projector type in this group. I'm just saying that's what I'm picking up. Okay. So take what you resonate with and I'm just picking up on the essence. Okay. And I recommend you check like on the body graph, like I told you. So why I keep encouraging that is because only when you actually start to discover the stuff you're made of by way of seeing your conscious and unconscious attributes, will you actually thrive and be able to tap into your personal power and on how you actually operate on your own authority okay so i hope this makes sense to you um you know dive a little bit deeper for yourself you owe that to yourself okay group number two so to be honest guys i, I believe that the key to creating a very a more complete and flourishing society in this world is that only when each person truly knows their own ability and worth and when each person actually shines, right? Shine their badass self, shine their badass powerhouse self, right? To his or her own very own unique expression, will we actually begin to cleanse and unify our collective planet, right? So projectors are basically known as the guides, the teachers, the, you know, um, the the sages, right, of, of the world, the ones that actually help guide people right uh those that may seem a little lost or things like that so for me from what i learned projectors are known as you know that and they're very knowledgeable and they have a lot of wisdom which leads me to this card here which is the akashic library okay number two harmony harmonizing with the akashic records harmonizing and realizing that you have access to those things you guys are not just wise teachers from nowhere. You basically have many lives. <laughs> I always tap into the past lives because I, you know, oh my gosh, you have no idea how much you know. So basically this Akashic Library is all within you guys. And this is what makes you a powerhouse. Okay, a badass powerhouse at that. And I have a feeling that you guys are the wise ones in your group of friends. Um, but sometimes it may come across a bit harsh. So uh, hear me out so if you may uh you may have the tendency to actually overstep other people's boundaries now don't take this uh to heart uh you may also see that that could be true right sometimes you're so honest and you're so ready to give people information that sometimes it can kind of cross your uh, other people's boundaries a little bit okay so be mindful about that um so even though at times you're actually really speaking the truth but it just, you know, it just needs a little bit of a touch of like warmth or tactfulness, you know. But because of this, you may find that others love to gaslight you in order to dim your light, okay. Because you are, you, um, you know, you're basically, when you do what you do and when you are actually giving information when it's unsolicited, it's basically projecting a side of them that they were trying to maybe avoid or maybe, you know, your remarks and statements can be very triggering, right? On both levels, good and bad, right? So you are that 
that that person that those thought provokers okay the energy that continues to enrich the world okay your i with your ideas and your creation so you have very specific skill sets that can actually help the world so much um the trick is to really gauge and have patience with your teachings okay uh, so remember you first must have an audience in order for you to teach right so if you deter people then you know who will be there to listen and learn from you guys right and you guys have a lot of really wonderful golden nuggets that people really would learn very well from so learn how to refine uh, do a little you know tune fine tuning uh, refinement of the mind is important for you guys group number two so with that said though don't be discouraged okay because you are amazing at what you do you're so skilled in your specialty uh, that you don't really need to worry about other people taking over your role because what you need is encouragement and self-empowerment right nobody else can do what you do okay I have a feeling that you guys love words of affirmations because the projectors in my life, they really do love words of affirmations and that has stand true for them. Um, you know, they uh, projectors really love validations and encouragement and things like that, right? And love to be part of a group because invitation, right? So the thing is, it has come to, uh, to my realization and also learning um, as of late that the projectors really do they are really great lie detectors. Like say, for example, you are speaking out of your ass and you're not really coming from an authentic place, uh, giving them a compliment. So they will see that, okay? It has to come from authenticity. And you don't like false words, like I said. You don't like false statements about you, okay? You can catch on pretty quickly, okay? I, I do notice that. And your type is very quick-witted, very intelligent group. I really love your group so much. But with that, though, I, you know, the thing is, when we're talking about projectors and feeling the need or the want to belong somewhere, I really do see and I look down and I notice the sadness card here. OK, so not to say that you guys will feel sad all the time or anything, but, you know, there's a sense of a bit of a melancholy or a sadness to your vibrations, though. Um, th that doesn't always have to be true that you, you don't have to, you know, don't don't mark my words with that one. But I do notice with the projectors um, that I have seen and know that they have a slight vibration that kind of takes you to a little bit of a melancholy or like a sadness vibration um, because they always kind of feel like they need to belong somewhere and they don't really know um, where where they belong, right? Even though they don't realize that they belong where they're at because they're good at where they're at, you know, at any given moment. And all of those things will progress naturally, okay? Because they're taught to be initiators, but in actuality, they just need to learn how to have some patience and kind of learn how to fine tune those opportunistic times, right? To, to um, be invited. So it, there's a sense of, like I said, a longing to belong. You long to be a part of a community. And I did, I did pick that up with group number two. I'm going to count three or count from three, three, two, one. Okay. So you've had experiences and uh, especially with rejection or abandonment. Okay. And you may have felt a bit lost in the world. Like I said, there may have been people who really didn't appreciate you, right? So who didn't, um, you know, really create space for you. Didn't, they didn't understand how you operate. So they think there's something wrong with you, but there is nothing wrong with you. It's just how you're designed, right? So, you know, the thing is that creates a space in your garden for weeds to grow, right? Because we did talk about the water, your garden thing. And it really kind of allows those weeds to grow and form itself and, and plant roots within that the soil that you have in your garden. So this is a reminder to you, okay, group number two. And if you are a projector and you're resonating with this information, listen well, please, because I really need you to understand that you are important, okay? Now, with that, you know, it's easier said than done, but I would ask you to really fully forgive and let go of that old situation, okay? I'm not saying forget what happened, don't learn from it, you know, things like that. What I mean is take the lessons, turn that into wisdom, right? Because you guys are wisdom filled. Wisdom that will actually someday fuel you into success, okay? You've got the sauce group number two. You are a badass powerhouse, don't forget that, okay? Because I see the potion card here. And when the potion card is out, it means that you guys, here, let me show you. Look, 
basic witch. No, there's nothing basic here. You guys are really awesome. Okay. You guys are, you may also resonate with being a witch as well, or maybe want to look into that. Um, cause you know, you may have the ability to work with magic right now. Number 24, look that up, right? But the thing about potion is that this card is indicating that you have all the ingredients, okay? To make a gorgeous concoction, okay? You have the knowledge to add all the right spices to the mix. Guys, the, I'm not kidding, group number two. And if you guys are projectors, projectors. <laughs> in order to brew one of the best potions in the world, you just have to allow yourself to actually shine in your own unique authenticity, okay? You are not like other people, you are not. You are your own delicious light. And even if others don't see it, it doesn't matter. You don't need to seek outside validation to kind of give you that. You just need to go within, okay? See how her eyes are closed even though she's making this potion? Because she trusts her ability to make the right potion, okay? That's the whole point, right? You guys are badasses. You might even uh, resonate with making potions. That could be a really cool thing too. I think that's called a green witch. Um, but anyways, so... I'm considered a baby witch still, I, but I, within my, my family line, we are hedge witches, and I notice that I do work really well within the hedge um, system, you know, just behind the veil, spiritual, uh, ethereal. So what I'm seeing is that you guys have your own uniqueness, okay? No one else can copy you. No, no one else can do that, and even if they tried, they can't. It's just not possible. You guys are very unique, okay? So embrace that about yourself. There's a sense of purity about you guys, okay? Because I do see the purity card here with the fairy card. See how the, the colors are correlating, right? So beautiful. I love pink. And it's so funny because someone just told me that they've been seeing pink auras on me. So that was pretty interesting. <laughs> so, but I'm not a protector. I'm a generator. Anyway, so back to your reading, purity, right? So I have a feeling you guys like to speak the truth almost all the time. It's because you expect that from other people too. And so naturally, innately, you you sometimes, you know, spew out whatever you're feeling and you're like, oh, okay, maybe that wasn't the right time to, to say it, right? So you may have a period of time in your life where you were kind of, you know, disgusted to be around other people, right? Or maybe other people... Uh, you see other people, uh, you know, operating in their lower selves, right? They, they probably are chronic liars or there's always some kind of trickery going on, right? So all of those things you dislike, you don't value them and it's not in your frequency of expression. So you find it really hard to understand why others have to go that route, okay? So what I'm saying is that you just need to trust in your ability to actually achieve, right? There will be moments where you you are needing to stand your ground on things because remember you have the six of wands right right here you have the six of wands and the seven of wands and seven of wands is talking about having to stand your ground and staying grounded okay after even winning because now that you've won and you've taken over this castle now you got to protect it okay so that's the whole point you won the battle um, you know, you hijacked back your, your, your mindset, right? So now you're back on track and you're kind of, um, having to defend that space. So that's what is, what it's correlating to now, even see, look at the, look at the, um, what do you call it? The synchronicities. You've got the white horse and you've got the white horse here. I just noticed that just now. That's so amazing. I literally was like, Whoa, what is this? Oh, it's a white horse, but the white horse is here too. So, right. And the, the both lights are near the white horse. So you may also resonate with unicorns or white horses. Maybe that's the thing for you guys. Um, what else? Yeah, so basically what I'm trying to say is that it's, it, if you can stay flexible at, at times, right? Even though you have these people that are operating from their lower selves, if you can stay flexible, okay? If you can pivot right at the correct moment, you'll see that you really have great things coming from those opportunities that you're going to be invited to. So this is indicative of this energy here, right? The six of wands to the seven of wands, um, which is the essence of being seen for your skills and achievements, okay? Because the six of wands is talking about recognition, um, winning uh, triumphantly over something that was really, you know, hard and staying grounded because you're moving to the seven of wands. Um, the essence of that is trusting that you can defend your space and give authority, okay? So when you are in your natural element and environment, which actually leads you to this element here, the nature card. We'll talk more about this here. When you are in your own element, 
you soar like a bird, okay, into the skies. And this is also letting me know that you are holding the essence of the projector type, like I said. And this will, you know, the thing is projectors are, you know, guided to actually, in order to, be, to become, you know, masterful in becoming the guide and wise sages that you are, you also have to learn perfect timing. You also have to learn certain things, right? So while you are in the waiting time for the invitation stage, just keep grinding behind closed doors, okay? Keep going and finding yourself. Keep growing your skills, okay? Refine um, your skills and tuning into your abilities and and you keeping, uh, you know, the productiveness, the, the staying productive, you know, you keep producing things, right? Just like that productive, I don't know, I can't even say that word, the productivity card. Um, and here, I'll show you what the, that looks. So see how the productivity and the nature card correlates to that, like they really match in terms of colors too. And that's the thing, because this is what will help you elevate your vibrations and bring about more invitations to you, okay? More opportunities to partake in, right? For those really beautiful creative projects that you, that you wanna do, but, you know, initiating it may not be the best way for you in terms of your design. But, you know, you can do as you wish because everybody has free will. But I do recommend you to take that body graph chart and really take a look into it. And, they, um, you know, so let me actually read the affirmation card that came here. So it says here, I let go of the shadow of the past by seeing someone for the first time with the eyes of love. Okay. Remember. Yes, those people hurt you, but ultimately it's like, okay, let me just like, you know, I really, really feel that you guys are really amazing. You guys have such a unique power, okay? You guys are badass for sure, okay? Keep trusting in yourself and no matter which human design type you guys are, it's about you embracing yourself as you are, even in the midst of all this, the, the, the dark shadowy side, right? Because you said, it says here, you seeing uh, the light within other people, it's about you learning how to see that as well. Um, but the thing is, it's about releasing that shadow and seeing the light within all. Um, it's kind of like that. You know how like people, um, you know, the spiritual community will always kind of say namaste. And when someone greets or leaves you with a namaste, it's talking about, hi, I greet you. Um, I see the higher self within you, you know, that's the, that's the whole meaning of that, that word. So now this is asking for you to do the same, that same essence. Okay. Um, so back to you being holding the essence of a projector, um, you can still influence the energy to provoke invitations. Okay. Just a reminder, use your witty minds to get that sparkling. Okay. Um, the universe will hear you. And in the meantime, just really have fun guys. Okay. So with that, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you like this reading, if you haven't already. Okay. So come join our amazing and creative family here where I do interesting and empowering pick a cards for you guys so that you can shine your deliciously unique light into the world. It's totally free and it will help your channel. Uh, it will help my channel to grow uh, with you guys. Uh, in order to help as many people as possible, right? So that's my main goal, okay? I really want to make sure that those who need to hear the message can hear them. So who knows what that can spark, right? Who knows what that can really um, open up for them? So same thing with you and same thing with me. So it's like we're all in this together. Um, feel free to actually like, share, and comment down below. I love interacting with you guys. With that said, take care, and I will see you in my next one. Hi friends, have you picked out this timestamp? It is for group number three. Yes, hi group three, thanks for joining me here. So what makes you a badass powerhouse, right? Your innate design. So basically, yes, you have picked out this pile and I will, uh, just a reminder, I will be kind of correlating a little bit of information on the human design according to what I see here. Um, again, you know, don't hold me to it and may not be your accurate design type. Uh, this is not, I'm not a human design reader. Um, so this is not to assess which type you are, but it is kind of going to tell you what, you know, information, what kind of essence is, is exuding that kind of matches that type. Okay. So with that said, let's get started. Group number three, this is your pile. So you've got trusting timing or trust the timing, trust the wave you come in on. Time is not running out, okay? So wow, that's really a strong message for you guys, for some of you guys at least, okay? 
So number 28, look that up online as per usual, uh, protest start a revolution, okay? So this kind of gives me the idea that maybe you stand for something very important, all right? So now you have, wow, look at the beautiful colors, protection from the fairy realm. You may resonate with fairies a lot. Um, I will read, actually, it's a very short one. So oneness is my true nature. So that's your affirmation card. I'll put that here. And then you've got number 21, healing. Wow, that's a really very potent card right there, okay? There's something there um, that I will elaborate later on. Number 21, rest. What? Wow, okay. Oh, I just noticed number 21, you've got, okay, so very significant number for you, 21, 21, or number 21, um, or, you know, Two one two one. So that's really important for you. So look that up. And then you've got stretch, right? Group three. And the in between tarot deck, you have got the magician. Moving on to the high priestess. So that is pretty intense for sure. Again, you know what makes you a badass powerhouse, right? So let's see. Group number three, you've got the. Um, I believe it's pronounced. Hilarion? Yeah, Hilarion. So a Hilarion is a masterful master that has a lot of knowledge in a particular topic. So number five also is talking about creating change, right? Um, Thought provoking, uh, you know, conflict, things like that, finding resolution or starting a revolution. Those are the number fives, okay? Changes. So you guys are pretty powerful. Wow, group three. Uh, Brother Raccoon, a safe place for you to go, okay? Oh, I love, look at that illustration, so cute. Okay, so per usual, uh, for my readings, I normally take a couple of minutes. Um, and uh, you, it'll be a couple of seconds for you guys, but I, I need to see the different scenarios that will um, exude from your spread here. So with that, I'll see you in a couple of seconds. Okay, group three. So what makes you a badass powerhouse, right? Your innate design, right? So... Immediately, I actually, it's funny because normally I would either go for this one first or this one first because those are the newest uh, deck out of the spread. But what I really w I'm drawn to is this moon and this magician here, right? This is the in-between tarot deck from my friend Janine Worthington. Um, we are friends on social media. And I actually did a, um, I'll link it down below as well, a, uh, you know, one of those unboxing videos. So it's a really beautiful deck. I totally recommend it, okay? So with this Magician card, group number three, what makes you a badass powerhouse is, what's the stuff that creates that innate design, right? That allows you to actually be so powerful that you automatically, um, you know, really tap into all of the resources that's surrounding you, okay? Because that's what the Magician's all about. Now, this group, it really, I, it kind of correlates to this card of, um, to the system of the, in terms of human design chart, I can tell that you guys um, may have manifesting abilities because of the magician, because magicians are, you know, usually manifesting something. Uh, but let's say if it's a pure manifester or if it's a manifesting generator, okay? Both actually holds the ability to manifest, but manifesting generators have that hybrid ability to actually go off of their gut feeling, that gut response, right? Uh, before they actually make their, their moves. So um, take what you resonate with. Again, like I said, I'm not a human design reader. Um, go online, check that out. But with this said, group number three, this reading is not to actually identify which type you are. It's only refer referencing the essences in order to actually spark your curiosity. That's my whole goal is to actually spark that curiosity within you, right? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Because... Um, um, it's to encourage you to actually look deeper into your own design, your very unique soul blueprint, okay? So this way, you can actually really allow your special superpower to actually emerge uh, through the unraveling, right? Through the remembering of your soul, okay, guys? You don't have to fall into these categories, um, the two categories that I had mentioned, um, you know, the manifestor and generating, um, manifesting generators, but with that said, though, this magician card really is indicative of you holding the ability to actually initiate and create in ways that yields great results. So, like, 
If you choose anything that you want to do in any field, you most likely will do really well, you know, uh, because you seem to have a bridge and a connection to the ethers because this is talking about the magician moving on to the high priestess and the high priestess is all the all knowing, right? In the ethere uh, ethereal uh, spiritual realm, she knows everything, but you got to ask, right? You got to know when the right time to ask, you get all of those key factors that come into play. Sorry, my neck is itchy. So <laughs> with that said, I really do feel that you are actually more of a generating manifester, okay? A manifesting generator. Sorry, I said that like backwards. But anyway, so <laughs> the manifester part of you um, really wants to take the initiative, right? Uh, especially on certain creative projects or a task. But then sometimes the timing is off and you don't really understand why that's happening, right? And you get to like really, really, you, you have to wait. And that's the thing that you notice about yourself. So if that's the case, then um, this pile is definitely for you. The uh, manifesting generators, right? Um, like I went into blank space for a second there, sorry. So basically what I'm seeing here is that you have to learn how to trust the timing, okay? Because you have to trust the timing card here. And that really talks about that, um, you know, the ability to actually know when to initiate and when to actually go within your gut response. But from what I learned um, through my own personal research as of lately, um, because I am fairly new in human design and I'm not a human design reader, like I said, um, I'm just incorporating that information so that it'll spark something within you to kind of dive deeper, right? It's something that will definitely help you as much as it has helped me, okay? And that's why I'm so passionate <laughs> about making this, this particular video. So um, it says here, trust the timing. So this takes me to this beautiful energy of knowing when to act, right? When to initiate, because you also have that manifesting side of you. So I honestly feel like you are leaning more towards that, like I said, and um, you don't, in a way, it's almost like you do have the ability to actually initiate, but in order to get the best results, I think for you guys is that you have to incorporate the that your actual natural ability to be, to be that generator, right? The generator actually go off of the response to respond. So you are here to actually see many different things, right? Um, to kind of operate and, and, and sense many different things so that you can actually feel within yourself, is this something that I want? Yes or no? And your gut response would be like, mm-hmm or mm-mm. So you go off of sounds and hums and grunts and growls. So go within your innate like primal kind of energy within your gut response and your, 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 <laughs> your sacral chakra and your solar plexus. So trust your ability to do that. Um, and not really put this in the forefront as much because I noticed that with manifesting generators, um, you want, you feel like you are like pure manifestors, which you do have a really great deal of manifesting powers. Okay. You do that. You definitely have that for sure. Um, but when you actually integrate the two aspects of both types, because you are a hybrid, you are all, you are, that's why I say that in the beginning, you are basically your own type, you know, um, even though you are a sub, you know, level to the uh, pure generators, but you are your own, you have your own rights to say, hey, I am a type, this is who I am, a manifesting generator, okay? Um, with that said, it's about you trusting your innate ability to respond with your gut, like I said, um, that that beautiful no doubt yes factor right you can feel it when you actually um you know something that stands true for you you can feel that and it goes uh-huh yep that's it so this is part this is the thing that makes you and why you are such a badass powerhouse okay group number three you are a badass powerhouse because your ability to actually sense when it's time to execute and deliver is uncanny, okay? Because you got this card too. And your power is so expansive that if you were to even think of placing your energy into a cause of some kind, just like this card implies, right? You know, literally, I'm talking about the protest card here. And you literally will create some kind of change. Like you've got number five. Where's that number five I saw earlier? Where'd it go? Oh, wow. Or was that a different? No, right here. See, I knew it. It was number five. So yeah, so here we go. Number 28, protest, start a revolution, right? So if you were ever to decide to want to go for a cause, be that rebel with a cause, right? 
you will definitely make great strides. But I'm not encouraging you to go ahead and start trouble. This is not what this is about. Uh, starting a revolution is not, you know, there's like a negative connotation to that. But in the way, it's kind of like if there's something that needs to be said or something that needs to change, this is the idea of actually making sure that those changes are being implemented or being at least instigated, right? Or initiated. And because you guys are not just generators with, with that beautiful, um, you know, not to say that generators are not powerful. They're very powerful in their own right, you know. But what I'm saying is you guys have the ability to actually initiate and that actually also works for you as well. But the thing is, um, with this card here, this is the quality of energy that you hold within you, okay? You can actually make moves and changes to society on such a high impact level, guys. Group number three, you have no idea. Because you hold both archetypes, you actually may find that throughout your life, you may um, you know, seem to have very strong belief systems, right? And strong gut reactions on a particular topic. So, you know, sometimes that may actually lead you to start a movement, right? Of some kind. And it's, it's the generator, uh, sorry, the generator side of you, <laughs> that workhorse mentality and ability to keep on going, that energizer battery that keeps on generating your energy, that beautiful drive that actually gets you to, to make sure that the gob, the gob, the, the job gets done, right? Because that generator side of you is really determined and very grounded, okay? You will easily find that um, you will become very masterful in things because you got the um, Hilarion here. And that talks about becoming, this gentleman in here has a lot of knowledge. This person is very uh, masterful and is a master at a certain particular topic um, or field, okay? So... Oh, wow. That was like a mouthful for me. Like, I really wanted to get this message out and I really wanted you to really kind of fully embrace yourself, especially with this revolutionary soul that you embody. That's what makes you a badass. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So more on the Hilarion. Um, actually, let me just talk about the Hilarion because we touch base with that. Wow. Look at all the different colors you guys have. You guys have really beautiful auras. So Hilarion number five, right? This is that special masterful master that I said about the trade, um, a particular trade that you guys really want to go into. Um, this embodiment is what you tend to become because you guys are, you know, you have your, you guys are hybrids, right? So when you allow yourself to actually trust more into your spiritual, spiritual gifts, uh, you know, like that high priestess within the um, in-between tarot deck there, it's talking about, it talks about you are here to make great strides and you are here to create change in the world by leading by example, okay? Fighting for your rights to equality, um, that could be it too, and the rights to actually do what you love and actually get paid for it, okay guys? To become very masterful in anything um, that really pull on your heartstrings, right? That really calls out to you. And there shouldn't be any limitations placed, okay? Human design is just a system to actually kind of give you an idea of what what is within you it is not here to limit you in any shape or form it is here to actually guide you and to show you what your unique resonance is so that you because everybody is unique no matter which type you fall into and you may have that in common but when you dive deeper into human design there are so many different facets and and things that it comprise of that it that totally encompasses all of those things that you um you know the energies that you may not even be conscious about that you actually hold within you that you need to actually have surface to the, you know, to have it emerge, right? Your superpowers, of, you know, really deep inside of you if you haven't found it already, okay? That's the whole point. That's why I'm very passionate about talking about it today. And I, my goal is to make sure that, you know, people really is given that opportunity to know about these things. Because I didn't know about it until I was guided to see those things, right? I actually, it's kind of funny because how I learned about human design is that there's actually in my YouTube feed, uh, this particular person that kept popping up about human design. And then I finally gave in and I said, you know, what is this? So that's how it popped up. And then I ended up purchasing, uh, Jatan Parkin's, uh, book, but my next book that I do really want to purchase is the Karen Curry one. And that goes more in depth. So if you are just diving in the beginning stage, Chatan Parkin really does an awesome, magnificent, you know, 
a job on it. So I recommend that book first. Anyway, so back to your reading. Anyways, um, so you've got, with this Hilarion, like I said, it's not about putting limitations uh, within you, right? It is, it's, it's reminding you to always go with doing the things that you actually love, okay? That's the key factor for generators, um, especially the generating side of you, um, to actually dabble in a lot of different things so that you can actually have the opportunity to respond, right? To actually dive in within yourself and say, hey, is this for me? Yes or no. So, you know, it's not about going with the crowd or going with society's opinion, okay? They you know, they can do whatever they want. It's about you diving deeper. You know, you, you don't have to worry about what other people think. You may be, you know, and why I'm touching base on this is because a lot of people are going through that phase where they're being kind of like coaxed into doing something they don't really want to do, right? So who knows? So you are basically, you know, maybe guided to watch this reading because you are, in a way, the universe is inviting you to actually take a leap of faith, right? Ask yourselves, is this the correct time to go for your dreams, right? The answer to that is no matter what you pick um, and whatever you decide on, you're basically protected. You're very protected because you have the fairy realm. The fairies here are, are doing this circle here to protect you, okay? You are meant to go into mastery into something. So find that out. Figure that out. See what that is all about. Um, protection. It says here, the fairies of protection are shielding you with a magical fairy. A uh, ring of light and light. Oh, love and light. Practice psychic protection before embarking upon any spiritual work. So if you are in the spiritual field like I am, um, before and after any reading, I always make sure that there's a ritual that I do to make sure that everything is protected. Everyone is protected. Whoever comes into the reading is always protected and they are only seeing what they need to see and what they need to resonate with, okay? So again, you know, it's also talking about you being protected in the ethereal, uh, the spiritual realm. <laughs> so yeah, the universe definitely has your back. Your guides have your back, you know? Um, and I was looking down as I'm talking about that I see you've got the brother raccoon, a safe place for you to go, number four. That also talks about stability, a stable place, okay? So for you, as a manifesting generator, you you may feel like um, you need some kind of, like, okay, so it also depends on what type of, like, you know, what gates are open for you and things like that because, you know, human design is made up of different variables, right? So that that is why everybody is unique because everybody's variables are different, okay? So uh, Brother Raccoon here, group number three, you've got this card that really speaks of doing everything at this moment under the radar, okay? It's about standing behind a set mask because the raccoon has those dark space within their eye space. So it's like wearing a mask, right? Um, so what that means is that at this moment, uh, maybe you're working on a job that comes with a title or a position that only lets others see what you do at that moment. Like say, for example, you are you work in an office job and your title is a closer in a mortgage company. People don't really know that you're secretly working as a light worker, something like that, right? Um, but the thing is, it's for you to, it's a reminder for you to actually work behind closed doors at this moment and not really share every little thing with everybody, okay? You are here to actually work privately and getting to, uh, to actually put your shit together first, okay? Before you get ready to actually execute all of your plans. So because, you know, you hold the essence of that, um, you know, that manifester, right? Because you have a hybrid of manifesting generator. So the manifester side of you tend to want to be open to sharing all of your goals and plans with other people so that they can come in and work with you. Um, and, and you want to take that initiative. But this card is asking you to actually work behind the veils at this moment and reveal your project only when it is strong enough to actually withstand all of the elements that may come your way. Because best believe when you got something good going on, there will be people who want to break you down because they they don't have the wherewithal within themselves to create something for themselves okay so know that you are powerful you guys are very great badass powerhouses okay you can stand your ground you can take initiative but you also have that wonderful gut response reaction and ability to actually know what is good and that my friend is very powerful okay um what else do i sense 
Uh, I mean, I keep looking back towards the, the magician, which is the manifest, because we were talking about the manifestor side of you, right? So the magician, you know, when you put these two cards together, it's it's that you are such a great manifestor, especially with heart, a person who actually cares about people, right? Most of the time. And, and it's about going into mastery and self-awareness, okay? It's going to lead you to people and places that you thought you, that can only be possible in your imagination, okay? But remember, group number three, you guys are magicians here, okay? You have the ability to actually be grounding and the ability to ground um, and pull all of the, the things that you imagine into the physical plane, okay? That, my friend, is a very powerful, powerful ability. And I am so jelly, not really. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you guys. <laughs> Such a huge display of powerhouse embodiment, okay? So that's why you guys, your essence with being an MG, I'll say that, um, is to actually connect with, with yourself, to go into yourself and to get to know who you are because, you know, you're... You are basically here at this reading because maybe there's some part of you that still doesn't really understand yourself, like why you operate a certain way or why you like or dislike something, you know? The thing is, the stern manifestor side of you doesn't like having others to control you, right? Um, you're very strong-willed and being the generator side of you, you are the... the um, the resource, right? The ability to actually utilize the abundant life force energy for the for the healing process. Because I noticed the, the this card here earlier, and number twenty one has something to do with twenty one rest and twenty one healing. So you guys are being guided to actually really rest, take the time now. I know the manifestor side of you guys really want to like create, 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 um, and and because you guys are generators, you feel like you have all the energy in the world to do all of those things all at once sometimes. But believe it or not, generators can burn out, especially when you're not taking care of your body, okay? Your body is your temple. And that statement, I know it's corny and cliche, but it is true. And you guys need to rest. Number 21, it came out twice. That's amazing. Um, but more in this card here. Um, by you healing your past hurts and disappointments, it will actually in turn heal other people, okay? Because you are, you know, you're leading by example. You have to remember that, right? The leadership qualities within you um, as a manifester side, you will have a pillar to actually lean on within yourself. If you actually maintain confidence, right? And you actually exude passion and strength. Don't ever, ever underestimate you guys. Group number three, you guys, I, I don't know how to express it any more passionately. You have this like, I told you, right? You guys have that revolutionary soul um, that can actually create change if you are able to actually tap into the right stuff, okay? That's actually lying within and lying dormant within you. And I have a feeling you may be the type to actually get going on something and you tend not to stop, right? Because this message of having to rest is very prominent here. So it really tells me that maybe you are the type that is, is like a the generator aside of you doesn't want to stop. So that's actually, you know, I know that you guys have great tenacity and drive, okay? Group number three, there's no doubt about it. You guys are great powerhouses, okay? But remember, you are still human, okay? We're all human here. Um, we are not just humans, but we are humans, okay? That's what I mean. Your physical body is a vessel that will actually, you know, it needs... When, when you're in lack of rest, you can actually burn out, like I said, and you don't want that, right? So do what's right for you first, okay? Rest. Get some rest. Do what you love. Um, you don't, when I say rest, it doesn't mean that you have to necessarily sleep. Um, for some people, resting can just be just sitting there and just zoning out for a little bit, right? But you need to take that time. Like I said, it's, it's, for some people, resting can also mean like moving their body around or dancing or something like that, right? I think you guys have like, yeah, see, I remember you guys have this stretch card here. So I love the illustration. So basically, you know, basically exercising will look different for everyone. Um, for you, it just means that you have to figure out your own frequency, right? What you can actually handle um, because it's almost like you have this duality within you. You have the manifesting side and then you have the generator side of you. And then you're like, okay, can I really do this? Can I go on forever? No, you're human. Of course not. So I would say where you can actually push it and where you can 
um, see, you know, what, what is your, where's the, that limit, right? Where's, basically what I'm trying to say is see what you can handle, right? Where can you push it? Especially pushing it past its limits, right? How can you thrive? These are the questions that you want to ask yourself. The generator side of you will actually, you can init, um, you can create that gut response within you by asking questions for yourself. Can you uh, imagine how wonderful and amazing that is for a person to be able to do that, especially as a generator and then a man manifesting generator on top of that? So basically, you can ask these questions, these really wonderful deep questions that will allow you to see what you are needing at that moment, okay? Because you have so much life force energy um, from being part of the generator side of you. So you may have restless energy, right? You you may feel like you can keep going and going. So I truly recommend you just get to know your essence, okay? Your energy and go from there. Remember, the universe is not going to actually pressure you into anything, especially you being a hybrid uh, and the gut response and the authority is to actually go and uh, look for things to respond to or have things come at you to respond to, right? As a generator, it is said that we actually work best when we don't initiate, right? But you have both the, the initiation factor and the generating side. So, but the best thing is for you to wait for life uh, for life to happen and for you to to have those things to respond to, um, for things to pop up to give you opportunities to respond, okay? And and that's wonderful and everything, but again, you know, from what I learned is that while you are in the waiting period, you can actually somehow influence these things to present itself for you to respond, okay? Um, what I mean by this is that you actually, like I said earlier, you, you send out questions to the universe, right? The second you put out those questions into the universe, what the universe does is tally those questions up, look at them, and then find, thing, find things to actually present and to, to you for you to respond to it. So that way, time you're not sitting idle and you're not waiting for things to come at you. If you don't move, remember, you are in the action world, okay? This world, this physical plane, the 3D uh, plane, is all about action, right? So... Even when you are in the waiting period, you still have to put out some kind of action, put out the questions that you need to do so that you can actually influence those opportunities for you to respond to, okay? Um, with that said, I feel, see, the look at the colors. I really do, I see like a lot of common denomination here with the pink and the purple and the yellows. So oneness is true, uh, wait, oneness is my true nature. So what does that mean for you guys, right? So what I'm gathering for you, group number three, that for a long time, you may have felt alone or lonely, okay? Maybe even disconnected at some point to the collective, right? On some kind of level. And now you are waking up to this understanding that ultimately we are one big oversoul. And like I said in another reading, you know, I just did, we are just walking towards one another, okay? All right, group number three. Wow. So basically, to recap, is basically what I picked up here is that you guys are a hybrid essence. It's not, it's not, you know, the, uh, it's very commendable because you have beautiful attributes within your soul that I would be worried to be messing with you guys, okay? You guys are really badasses here. Even if you find out that you're not this type, this particular type that I just read here, it just means that you can be curious about going into checking your body graph type. So go into the description down below and it's free to take that test. So just go ahead. And if you do need help, um, you know, navigating through that chart, I do know somebody who can actually help you with that. And just let me know, okay, in the comments. So you, um, the thing is, group number three, you really do... Um, you still hold this ability to actually shine in ways that other people don't really shine and that other people would have taken years to actually conquer and embody that 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 energy that you hold so with that said it's about you making moves quietly at this time though because um, remember the raccoon spirit card came out so 
With that said, best of luck to you guys, group number three. Please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, okay, if you like this reading. If you haven't already, come. Come join our beautiful, amazing creative family here where I actually do interesting and empowering pick a cards for you guys so that you can shine your deliciously unique light into the world. And it's totally free and it will help my channel to grow and we can work together in, in you know, sending out the messages to people, right? So, and that's my main goal, right? So uh, feel free to like and share and comment down below. I love interacting with you guys. Um, that really is me interacting with you guys at this moment, especially. Um, I'm able to give you guys my time and attention in such depth because I know that um, at this moment I can do that okay uh, but either way whether you know it doesn't matter how big this channel grows I will always find ways to give back to you guys in some shape or form and I, I know that for sure because I love you guys so much I really do want you guys to grow um, with me okay so take care and I will see you in my next one Hi guys, have you just picked out this time stamp? It is for group number four. Yes, hi, group number four. Thanks for joining me here. So, yes, so the delicious topic is what makes you a badass powerhouse, okay? Your innate design. So basically, as what I've been doing um, per pile so far, I've been correlating to the information regarding human design uh, system. Now, I am not a human design reader. That's a disclaimer here. I don't, this is not to make assessment uh, to get to know what type you are. I am only going to read the essence of what it could be. Um, but, you know, you can go ahead and go down below in the description box to see uh, your body graph chart there. There's a free um, body graph calculator there and you can find that out okay but with that said group number four this is your card your pile wow okay so you've got the blue flame spontaneous awakening activation integration time wow so this is actually the starseed deck um, by Rebecca Campbell and so that really tells me that you may be a starseed so if you want to check out my video on that one I have that in my on my channel as well okay um, then number 18, and you've got the tree, let them go. Yee. Okay, there's really a, like very potent information there. Now you've got the friendship card from the fairy, fairies uh, realm, okay? And then you've got the discernment card. And from the In Between Tarot deck here by Janine Worthington, I did a an unboxing for this deck, so you can also check that out. I know I'm like advertising for all the different videos, right? No, it's basically, <laughs> hear me out, group number four. All of these things that I am giving you to respond here is to actually ignite that curiosity, right? So basically, you've got the In Between Tarot deck, the Empress to the Emperor, right? So that's pretty intense, and it's pretty cool. And then you've got... Wow, okay, so number 36, sense, believe, okay? Believe in in your personal, you know, ability to sense things. Uh, four scrolls, the karmic trench. Uh, beauty, number 17, okay? So I see the progression here. I've got number 17 to number 18, so that may be a thing for you. And then your affirmation card says, when I'm in alignment with the love of the universe, pe uh, peace cannot be disrupted, okay? Maybe somebody's ne uh, needing to seek peace here or someone's wishing to have some peace in their life, okay? Maybe you guys are going through a lot because, I mean, obviously you are because of this, right? But let's see what the last card says here. A loyal guardian, a magical protector is there for you. Number 33, oh my gosh, look at the progression, 33 to 36. So... That's pretty synchronistic. Um, all right, so group number four, I'm actually gonna take a couple of minutes to uh, minutes to actually see all the different scenarios that come up and to be able to correlate to which um, you know design type that you may be. So basically, I will see you in a couple seconds. All right, group number four, what makes you a badass powerhouse, okay? Your innate design. So basically, what I'm seeing here, I'm so drawn to this beautiful card here. And because it is new also, but I really am drawn to it, the blue flame, okay? You guys, group number four, wow, you've got the blue flame and that for me is such a powerful energy. 
So this pick a card is about what makes you a badass powerhouse, right? What is your innate design, right? Now, I will be referencing some of the information pertaining to human design, like I said earlier, but this reading is in no way a, an assessment uh, of your body graph. So keep that in mind. Um, I do see a type that uh, may resonate, right? Because it's the energy I see across the spread here. So um, this is talking about integration. It's talking about you may be going through spontaneous upgrades and elevations. You may be feeling like you're going through ascension period, right? And this can be very uncomfortable, maybe mentally and physically for your body. And this is asking you to actually ease into these energies and allow them to actually integrate with your body at this moment and, and kind of embody the surrendering embodiment, right? Just allowing things to kind of flow as it comes. So now you may be wondering, well, what are the energies I see across the spread, right? You're, you're probably wondering that what, what type are you or what do you, what you may resonate with your energy, right? Um, what I do see to answer you is that it may resonate with, I know it's kind of like, because I know this design type is like very, very rare, right? Almost as rare as reflectors, but you, what I see is that you guys are manifestors, okay? Because especially with the blue card here, the blue flame card, okay? You have a strong sense of self. You know what you're capable of. And this may scare a lot of people that may come across, you know, your vicinity. But even so, they still, you may find that others allow you to actually help, um, you know, them to actually lead them to the waters, okay? Lead them to freedom or some kind of like, you know, you're, you're just really good at finding the direction. And that's why, you know, manifestors are, you know, they're, they're built for initiating, right? To actually start a project or to start something, right? Or to guide someone in a way in which you will kind of make sure to oversee that, right? And, you know, the thing is they, they, other people really do have this innate trust in you to help give them guidance. And that's what I sense. And that's why I say, you know what, the, these people, this group here must be manifestors or something, right? Could even be a, a, a hybrid. Maybe you're another group that I just did. Um, who knows, right? I'm not going to give you which one you have to guide yourself within your energies and see if you resonate with it. But, you know, gener um, generating, manifesting generators are also manifestors. But you, this group here, they're like, you guys are very pure manifestors. Like, you don't have that gut response inside of you. You're more of like initiators, okay? You, you're action takers. You're like, boom, 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 get, get shit done. <laughs> That's what I'm picking up, okay? Um, with that said, though, there is, with your design, there is a pro and con to that or, or like the other people may perceive pros and cons within your design as well because uh you know the thing about humans is that we don't let shit go we really don't we think about what happened in the past and we're like wow okay you did this to me you know <laughs> so maybe you're not so good or maybe there's a negative connotation attached to a certain word and you're like oh okay yeah you're not you know the thing is we need to, all of us, all types, right? Every every type in this particular reading really needs to understand that we're all just walking towards each other. We're all learning what our each special uh, resonant is and what our special um, superpower is and that we are here to actually collaborate, okay? And, and raise the vibrations of Mother Earth, raise the vibrations of the human collective, all right? That's the whole point of doing this reading here. And to also, you know, I my de deliberate purpose, my purpose to create this video here is to actually entice you into curiosity, right? Into being curious about human design because I really want you guys to be at your best game, okay? Your best version of yourself and to know yourself will bring that out, okay? Uh, okay, so enough about that. So the blue flame, so the thing about history is that back then, manifestors were the kings and queens that were, uh, you know, whether they're good kings and queens or not, they were leaders that actually took control of a lot of people, a lot of generators and um, projectors and other people that really didn't know their worth and they took advantage of the power that they had in terms of their awakeness and their awareness of their own power and utilized um, their ability to actually harness, you know, all of those uh, other people's energies and they used it for something that may be a contribution to something that was great or that wasn't so great, right? Because that's the thing about manifestors is that back then that was the energy, 
right? But guess what? You are the manifestors that are here now in today's day and age. So that means that it's not about other people anymore. It's about you. It's about you taking control of yourself, knowing and learning how to actually get to know yourself. It's not about do world domination or anything anymore, right? It's, it's about you actually finding out who you are. And that's the great part about today's day and age is that you you guys, you, manifestors are very rare. And for you to come to this reading, and if you check your body graph and you are a manifestor, then I really truly encourage you to embrace your uniqueness, okay? With all of the types, but with you guys, it's like, you know what you hold, you know your, your essence, right? But then where do you go from there? That's some, That's the big question, you know? with my or through my own awakening right being woke doesn't mean benevolence is going to actually always be displayed by other people all the time just because they're awake it's it's not about that and most of the time you'll notice that a lot of awake people may operate in the beginning through um another essence that are is not of light right and it's it's the to be a light worker to be of essence of light and to actually be a really good um spiritual person is to uh, hold space for yourself and hold space for other people okay it's the ability to actually empathize and have compassion with the wokeness right it's 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 about the the wokeness that actually creates a spiritual being within you the light being within you okay you can still be woke and work for the dark that's what i'm trying to say and not everybody out there that is awake is of light Okay, people, there, there are people that are awake and know what is behind the veil, but still work for something that isn't good for them. That's, that's huge. Um, it, it, you know, it's true. So with that said, in reference to this pile, though, um, this is not saying that you are of dark there. It's not saying that you work for the, the dark and dark entities and things like that. And if you are, you know, so be it, that's your, that's your prerogative, right? And I wish you the best. But what I'm trying to say, but if you are coming to my reading, though, most likely you're not because I, you know, that's just not what this is about. So the thing is, you know, it's just touching base on the shadow side that may have been the one behind the wheel in the past, either earlier in your years in this life or maybe in, in your past life, right? And we've been, you know, all of us have been bad and good through some type of lifetime one way or another one time or another okay but to be honest only take what you resonate with though okay just a just a reminder but we're talking about past lives because i noticed the karmic trench card here the four of scrolls and for you guys group number four um being the manifestors that you are uh, you know the karmic trench really talks about a touch base on karma it touches uh, on, you know, you always finding a way to actually, how do I put this? So what, what I'm trying to say is that the, the karma, right, is always going to find its way to its rightful owner. That's just how the way this world works. So with that knowledge, so we don't always remember, you know, our past lives and how we live out our past deeds, right? So keep that in mind, okay? So you may be like a really good person this lifetime and then shit happens to you, but then you're like, why is this happening to me? You don't understand it, but you don't know what you did in the past life to those people. You don't know that, right? So always keep whole space for yourself and other people. Have grace for other people and yourself is what I'm trying to remind you guys of. So with this energy of being a manifester, um, you may have a need to actually take control over other people's lives. And I know that sounds really like a really harsh thing to say to you guys, but if you guys do resonate with that specific thing that I just said about you wanting to take control because not to control them, but you think that you're doing what's best for them, okay? That's a sense of control, right? That's the thing. And sometimes that can also bleed into other people's boundaries, right? Other people's rights, right? So what I'm trying to say is that you may have an overbearing view in life or overbearing view on, on especially on how you display um, love, right? You may see it as loving someone very deeply and lovingly, but other people may be, they can't breathe, you know, because you operate on a different level. And everybody operates on a different on different levels. That's just a gentle reminder to you guys. Um, I'm just a messenger. 
you know? And, you know, the thing is, you know, please don't be offended by what I'm saying. I'm not saying that all of you guys in this group are like that, but you may know somebody that are other that's like that, right? Or you may have come out of that that phase of your life that used to be very overbearing and you're learning how to hold space for people or be very accepting of other people. Now, I say that lovingly. Um, the thing is, when you actually allow other people and trust that other people can actually do what they need to do for you to actually empower them on their own self-empowerment and you allowing them to trust that they will get the job done, you may actually find that you will gain two things. What I'm saying is, you know, because it talks about peace over here, so it will bring about more peace in your world, okay? And it will also empower those to empower and believe in themselves, all right? I mean, I'm getting all of that through this karmic trench card here. <laughs> so, so with that said, what I'm trying to say is, yes, you are a manifester, but we are in a different time zone, time period, time age. You're no longer in the ancient times. So it's not really like you can just force people to do things because more and more people are waking up. And I'm not saying that you have the tendency to do that. Maybe you, some of you guys may still be operating from that lower state, but you guys are moving out of that lower state. That's why you're coming to this reading here. But the point is, now that the stress is not really upon you anymore in terms of you know having to help other people navigate their future and things like that, because manifestors are great guides, okay? Um, much like projectors, projectors are wise and and you know they're teachers of the the community. But you guys are like the top, top, like, you know, the ones that actually create the damn thing and put everything together, you know? So, yeah. Um, Karmic Trench. Wow. That's like, that's a lot of information from like the energy that I'm, that's exuding from this card. Um, but, you know, that's the thing, you know, you guys are such badass powerhouses, group number four. You you can actually, you are very loyal and you can actually gain a lot of loyal guardians, right? Um, this can also talk about you having a, what's called a witch is familiar. If you are resonating with being a witch, you may have a familiar, a spirit animal that actually follows you everywhere and guides you and protects you, okay? So with that said though, the loyal guardian is about you giving loyalty with pride, okay? You expect the same thing from other people when you do give that to other people. When you decide to take others under your wings, I feel like you, as a manifester, right, you shine brightly because you are made to be a leader, right? You have a natural and adaptability to, to lead people into a lot of good things, right? So, you know, um, what else do I sense? Um... I was looking down and I noticed that the tree card over here, the let them go card, it, it's kind of speaking of sometimes when you do take other people under your wing, just know that you're also taking a risk as well in terms of like, you know, getting disappointed, right? That's a high possibility because, you know, as humans, we can't control what other people do. We can only control ourselves. So no matter how much you want to help other people and guiding other people to see your view, only those that will resonate with your frequency will actually be open to listening and learning from you, okay? Just keep that in mind. So it's nothing against you. It's just, you know, your frequencies don't match. And sometimes you do have to let them go, right? Like the tree card here. Um, it's, wow, it's crazy. Look, number nine, 18. One plus eight is nine, numerology. Crazy, right? Tree, let them go, all right? You will notice that it pains you so hard to let go of certain aspects of yourself too this is not just about letting go of other people it could be letting go of, of of things within yourself that you need you know that's not good for you that no longer serves you because you're moving to a more prosperous stage in your life that you need to let these things go so you can prosper okay um what else do i see i see yeah i see you see the way to improving um your own life by you know, you improving your own life, you also improve other people's lives, right? So, but with this card, I feel that I notice this person is in pain, right? Because maybe they have to let go of a friend or a family member that is, you know, is a lost cause in a way, and you want to help them so much because you want to see 
Um, you want to see them through. You want to help them uh, to see the way out, right? You you want to improve their lives just like how you're improving your life, right? But, you know, if only they would listen, you ask yourself. And you're like, oh my gosh, you know, why can't they just listen to me? I know what I'm talking about, you know? Being the manifester that you are because you're so self-confident, right? You're very confident with your with yourself. You know who you are. But that's the thing, though. Even though that's the thing that I really love about human design. And I say this with passion because as much as you know yourself and we're ever evolving, right? Ever growing. As much as you know yourself, the human design system can actually show you because they split into two parts where after you put your information, your birth date and, and the time that you were born and the location, um, they will show you what is conscious to you and what is unconscious to you. So the unconscious side of your manifestor side, what is there? What can you capitalize on, right? What is the thing, your it factor, your pizzazz? What is making you that badass manifester, you know? who Who's doing this? What's in within you? Those are the really beautiful questions that come about when you do dive deeper, okay? Um, what else do I sense? Yeah, you, I mean, come on, you got the, got, you guys got the blue flames, which can really imply a cleansing stage in addition to the spontaneous ascension that, that the, the card indicates, but you don't have to worry about others not um, staying with you because I noticed that the loyal guardian and the let them go card really makes me feel like you guys are maybe a little bit, um, you know, I hate to say the word afraid, but a little bit afraid. Yeah, a little bit afraid of being alone, maybe, or like um, afraid to let go of this person. Maybe these people um, may not come back. And then you're like, wow, if I let them go, because I feel like you guys being the manifester, strong willed manifester um, that you are. I mean, there's a there's there can also be a slight pride. Right. I, I did pick that up that once you let somebody go and they treat you like crap, it's kind of hard for them to come back into the vicinity of your circle. That's what I'm sensing. I'm sensing that you guys are very headstrong, but in a good way. Okay. Um, so I got the friendship card and the believe uh, card here, the sense card here. So with this friendship card, I'm talking about like, cause we were talking about the letting go, right? And the thing is, your energy and your willpower to manifest is so divine and great that you even, um, like, you know, you got this beautiful, like, what do you call it? This initiation ability, right? That, that uh, making friends is not hard for you, but keeping them and, and making sure that you have discernment because you've got discernment here as well, right? And making sure you're operating and they are operating from their authenticity, right? Because that's how you build a strong foundation for any relationship, to be honest. Um, but, you know, you know, it's about you. What else do I sense? Yeah, it's about you leading by example and standing true to your own authenticity. On, uh, authenticity. <laughs> So others will actually, you know, naturally gravitate towards you, right? And and the ones that will get it, they will get it. When you get it, you get it, right? Um, so, you know, it's about this friendship card where when they do get it, they will match your frequency and kinship and friendship will naturally unfold and be built upon. Now, with that, I, I did mention the discernment card, right? I did mention that because... It's, it's huge. It plays a huge factor in your relationship building, your human connection, okay? okay. This is a very, um, it's a good topic. You know, it's a good card to have in your spread, especially for manifestors, because sometimes um, some manifestors are so used to taking initiative and always going, act, taking action without even thinking sometimes because they have that ability to create, 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 but, and, and to initiate. But sometimes they, you guys have to learn how to take a step back for a little bit and really discern, okay? It's just a matter of you tapping into your own gut system, okay? Because manifest, manifestors, according to the human design chart, uh, you guys are not built with like an automatic gut system where generators do have those things. Now, manifestors are not like generators. So where generators, so they operate from their gut, right? Their intuition, their internal response that guides them. But you, as a manifester, you are innately designed to initiate, okay? To take action and execute things, right? So I would recommend for you to actually slow down and ask yourself these really important questions, right? Um, and things like that. So I'm actually inviting you to actually, you know, take that abundant power of energy of yours 
and tap into your inner child more and more, okay? Because manifestors are known to be very serious though. Like they, they just, just, they just wanna make sure things are being properly built because they are initiators and they wanna make sure their projects are being maintained properly. Um, sometimes with that doing, sometimes that huge responsibility can kind of take the fun out of, out of life, okay? So the more you see the fun side of life, the more you actually will learn to surrender a bit more, right? The ebbs and flow of life, that's what I'm picking up. And the more um, you actually see beauty, right? Beauty in, yeah, I didn't even talk about this card yet. Um, I looked down and I noticed the beauty card. You know, it's about you seeing the beauty within the scars that you have. So it's it's in the surrendering phase that you will actually find beauty in what you, you know, perceive as flaws, right? In other people and in yourself. Because look at this girl here. She's got a scar here, okay? She's a gorgeous girl. Gorgeous. Even with the scar, she's gorgeous. But that's the thing. That's the symbolism there, okay? Um, I mean, look at her scar. She has a scar. Um, and to me it actually still enhances all her other wonderful features at the same time. Because without the scar, there's only surface level appreciation of the beauty that she holds, right? But with the scar, we start to actually appreciate all the good qualities that we have and hold, right? That she has and hold. I mean, that's you, you know? And notice how the snake, right? In this card is looking at her with such intensity. This is to symbolize the recognition of the shadow self, okay? This card. I mean, the self that actually held on to broken things for way too long, okay? Because you've got that tree card here. And it's talking about, you know, you are actually holding on to something that you're not supposed to be really holding on to anymore because it's not within your frequency to hold on to. Let them go. Whatever it is, some thing, better things will come out. It actually reminds, oh my gosh, I was talking to my god sister the other day and Legit, I was telling her about this meme because she was talking about a dream she had. I can't go into details with that, but she was talking about um, this meme. Well, actually, I was talking about the meme I was sharing with her. I saw this meme um, that talks about a celebrity that the celebrity was talking about a meme that she saw about how this little girl was holding on to a teddy bear, right? And the teddy bear is a small teddy bear that she has connections with because she's done everything with that teddy bear. But that teddy bear has a naughty side to that teddy bear that really isn't good for her. And, but she doesn't want to let it go because she's built so much connection towards that teddy bear, right? But, and then God goes, you know, if you believe in God or a higher power, whatever you resonate with. So in that meme, God says, child, let that teddy bear go. There's, um, you know, you got to let that go because, uh, you know, you need a, you need a, it's not good for you, Right. The, and the little girl said, no, no, I'm really connected to this teddy bear. I know it hasn't been the best teddy bear in the world, but like I really love this teddy bear. But little did she know that there's a bigger teddy bear behind her that God has been waiting to, to present to her. But because she's holding on to something, there was no space for that big teddy bear to come through. So that's the thing is that you guys have to take a leap of faith, right? You guys have to know that um, you are worth taking that leap of faith that there is something greater than that, that little teddy bear. Okay. And that's why you got that tree card there. Um, with that, I hope that was very helpful for you guys. But when it comes to this beauty card, it's about a symbolism of, you know, that shadow side that I was talking about. Um, so basically it's, it's a, it's a indication of letting go of all of those things, right? Those past pains, those past hurts so that you can actually be lighter, having a lighter load, right? You don't have to be that 10 of wands. Like you have to carry that up the hill. You don't have to be there anymore. You can actually soar and thrive. Okay. So this snake is asking you to actually shed all of those things off of your aura and start actually utilizing your senses more. Okay. Because you did pick up the census card. I picked that up earlier. See, you got the census card. Okay. Like, seriously. So with this sense card, right? It's also number nine. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Six plus three. Wait, oh, yeah, it is nine. So nine, nine, the ending of a cycle, ending of a karmic cycle, okay? So with this sense card, I know it's, you know, it's easier said than done. It's easy to say, yeah, let it go. Forgive them, right? Do it for you. You hear that that saying a lot and sometimes you wonder, do they really understand what I'm going through? You know, the depth of the pain that I'm going through? Trust me, okay? 
um, you know, I, I get it. You know, a part of you must be thinking, oh, they just don't get it. It's too hard, right? It may very well be very hard. And I get it because, you know, in my own personal experiences, I actually empathize, empathize with you guys so much because, you know, I've been through, you know, certain things that you may have been through. And someday I will tell you more about those things. But anyway, so when I ask you to let things go and forgive, I am asking you even with the understanding that letting go doesn't mean forget, right? It doesn't mean forget about all those things that happened to you. It doesn't mean that we don't see you or that we don't think you have any rights to hold on to these things. It doesn't mean that at all. We don't, you know, dismiss it and, and we are honoring your journey, okay? Um, but with asking you to let these things go, um, when I say we, I'm talking about the universe and me and the guides and your guides, your angels and God, and... It's that you don't deserve to be, you know, holding such a big load, okay? You absolutely are very deserving to be seen. Um, I mean, I think that this is the best time to really ask you, uh, ask you really deep, very deep questions here. Like, you know, by you holding on to these memories, okay? And keeping it vivid and active and reanimating the whole situation in your head. Is it serving you? Is it allowing you to actually thrive? Take some time to really think about that really long and hard, number four. I really, really love you guys, and I say it lovingly. Now, if your answer is yes, then all I can say is as long as you are growing and not hindering yourself, okay, then, you know, just tap into your best knowing. You know what's best for you, and I get it. But the thing is, these memories are etched into your being, right? Well, just like this card here with the scar that she has, it's etched into her skin. There's no true way to actually mask and cover what's done. I get it. And I totally empathize. And I know that there's something that cannot be undone and that cannot be, you know, unseen, right? But the thing is, look what's what you're you're going in between the Empress and the Emperor, abundance and resources and happiness and and just going into your your beautiful divine feminine energy. Okay, Group Number Four, you are such a badass powerhouse in the way in which you transmute these scars, right? These past pains and transform yourself into this beautiful Empress. Okay, yeah, now. No gender specifics on my channel. I'm saying the Empress because the Empress card came out, but you could be of any gender or non-binary or whatever you resonate with, okay? This is speaking about your energy. This is just emphasizing the divine feminine essence of your ability, okay? Your ability to create abundance for yourself, to actually surrender to the divine aspect of you, okay? Be more in the flow, all right? Because manifestors have a hard time being more in the flow because they're very rigid about creating things and getting things proper. <laughs> That's what I'm noticing. I do, you know, I, it's like they're very, they are harsher critics on themselves than anybody else can be to them. So manifestors, I love you guys. You guys need to tap more into your inner child. Sometimes it's not about taking action. It's about more of flowing into which action to take, Okay. Now, with the affirmation card, it really reminds me of the feminine wound, a womb, not wound, because um, these are like ovaries, and then the uterus is there. You know, you know what I'm saying. So when when I'm reading this card, I want you to think about you know what it is that that will bring you into alignment for peace. Okay, so it says here, when I'm in alignment with the love of the universe, peace cannot be disrupted. Right? When you don't allow anybody else to come into your your reality to disrupt your peace ever no matter what all right so with this group number four you guys are a badass powerhouse on so many levels that you actually don't even realize it sometimes because you're so used to being the leader right but with the thing is with all of that mentioned here in your pile um do know that human design is not to dictate or care um to actually put you in a slot right to categorize you um, to see what you are. Even if you resonate with a certain type, it doesn't mean that that's all you are. It's just showing you what kind of superpowers are lying underneath that type, okay? And it's not to place a limit to your essence or aura. So the purpose of understanding human design is basically for you to actually see all aspects of what may be conscious or unconscious, okay, within your personal design so that you can actually unearth and you can actually embrace what makes you very unique, okay? Because everybody has a very unique resonance and that's the whole point of me really being passionately 
um, asking you to embrace that. With that said, group number four, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you like this reading. If you haven't already, please come join our amazing and beautiful family here. We're very creative, right? And um, as you will notice that, you know, more and more people are starting to actually interact with each other and things like that. So with that said, um, this is where I normally do very interesting and empowering pick a cards for you guys so that you can actually shine your deliciously unique light into the world. It's totally free and it will help my channel to grow in order to help as many people as possible possible okay that's my main goal uh feel free to like share and comment down below i love interacting with you guys with that said take care and i will see you in my next one bye